Hi, my name is Bronwyn Legarier, and I'm a radiation therapist working here in Canada at the Cross Cancer Institute in Edmonton, Alberta. I have recently published an article with the ASRT, along with two colleagues of mine, Kyla Strachan and Joanna Bethune, both of whom work in British Columbia. The title of our article was The Variations in Radiation Therapy Tattooing Procedures Amongst Canadian Cancer Centres. The reason why we're interested in radiation therapy tattooing is because there's very little literature on the subject across the world. And so we decided that we would come up with a questionnaire and send it out across Canada. And the information that we got back, we used to produce a baseline of information for supplies and procedures. And our hope was that that information would be used in cancer centers across North America to improve this procedure and provide um, a bit of information so that people could make decisions for better evidence-based practice. So as radiation therapy tattooing was a passion of mine and still is, I would like to show you a bit of information about the supplies that I've talked about in the article as well as the procedures. And I'd just like to mention that the procedure I'm showing um, may or may not be along the lines of what is done here at the Cross Cancer Institute, but it's just the one that I wrote up as best practice when I was a student. I just wanted to talk about a few of the supplies that we recommended in our article. So the first is the single-use ink caps. So to use these, you just uncap your ink, pour a tiny little bit in, and then use that to tattoo your patient. So therefore, you're only using your ink cap for one patient and then throwing it out afterwards. And you're not contaminating your ink supply by putting your needle back into your ink supply after you've tattooed the patient. So there's no chance of contaminating the larger ink supply. Second here is a Solu-IV wipe. So we don't recommend any specific type of wipe or made by any company, but these do have chlorhexidine in them, which has a longer um, time that they keep the skin clean with as opposed to alcohol. Alcohol stops working after it's dry. So that's kind of a nice option, especially for immunocompromised patients. Next is a lancet. So these lancets just have a little sterile end that comes off and then you use that to tattoo your patient. Although they are quite a bit larger than these tinier safety glide needles and the safety glide needles do have um, a piece of plastic that snaps over the end of the needle once you're done tattooing, thus reducing the chances of a needle stick injury. There's all different sizes of these depending on what works best for your therapist at your clinic. Although it has been shown that the smaller the needle, the less pain you're going to cause your patients. Here is a, just a sterile gauze. I'm sure every clinic has something like this um, as an option. And we just use this um, to wipe the patient's skin afterwards because it's clean and sterile and there's no chance of reintroducing anything into the wound after you've tattooed a patient. And finally, we have a stainless steel tray that you can put all of your supplies on and it can be wiped down afterwards. It can also be autoclaved if you have that option at your hospital. And so therefore, no chance of cross-contamination can occur here in the stainless steel tray if wiped down as per your hospital policy.